What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Detroit Lions video. Now it is officially draft season in the NFL and with that being the case, obviously you are going to see and this is the time you are going to be seeing a lot of mock drafts from NFL analysts and, and other YouTubers and everybody surrounding the NFL is starting to create mock drafts of what certain teams should look to do going into this 2021 draft. And in today's video, video I wanted to go over my first mock draft now this is going to be a full seven round mock draft for the Deesh Reliance involving trade ups trade downs and a lot of different movement and a lot of different players being selected for this team now before we get into talking about the mock draft the first mock draft for the Detroit Lions if you are new to the channel and are enjoying this Detroit Lions content please consider liking the videos and subscribing to the channel it takes just two seconds out of you to do so it's quick it's free it's easy it takes just two seconds out of your day to do so so if you could take those two seconds to like and subscribe i'd be greatly appreciative for it but with all that being said and without any further ado let's get right into looking at the detroit lions first mock draft first full seven round mock draft of the draft season Now, this is a mock draft that I put together over the past couple of days. I use the Draft Network Mock Draft Simulator, which allows you to do trades, request trades, it allows the computer to suggest trades to you, and I kind of moved up and down. I did some trading around, and I finally think that I found a very good mock draft for the Detroit Lions. Now, starting off with the number seven overall pick, this is where a lot of talking point has been for the Detroit Lions. This is where a lot of controversy has been amongst fans. Do we take a quarterback? Do we take a wide receiver? receiver? Do we take the best defensive player available? Do we trade down? What do we do at the number seven overall pick? Well, at the number seven overall pick, I decided it would be the best option for the Detroit Lions to trade the pick away. Now, in this mock draft simulation, the Jacksonville Jaguars approached the Detroit Lions about their number seven overall pick and offered up their 25th pick, their 33rd pick, as well as a 2022 second round pick. Now, I figured this was very good value for the Detroit Lions, obviously getting two very high picks, a pick in the first round, as well as the first pick in the second round which is basically another first round pick along with a future second round pick where I don't view the Jaguars as being competitors next year so I believe even that second round pick next year will be a relatively high second round pick as well so I figured that was very good value to trade down a bit farther in the NFL draft than I initially thought I would however I thought the value was too high to pass up another offer was Washington that involved their 19th pick and their third in their third round pick as well I thought the Jacksonville offer was better so I went with that one, acquiring their second first round pick, their first second round pick, along with a 2022 second. Now, after the trade, I sat there and waited for the picks to move down to pick 25, where with the first pick in the NFL draft for the Detroit Lions, with the 25th overall selection, I have the Detroit Lions taking Christian Balmore, the interior defensive lineman from Alabama. Now, Balmore is a very good run stopper. He's a very good pass rusher. All around, he was probably the best player player available at pick 25. He's a big athletic player. He stands at 6'5", 310 pounds. Last year on the season, totaled 37 tackles, 9.5 tackles for loss, 8 sacks, 3 passes defended, and 3 forced fumbles. I mean, he's always around the ball. He's always making plays. He's a very good run defender. He's a very good pass rusher. I mean, he is just an all-around good player. And at the 25th overall pick, he was the best defensive player available. And with the Detroit Lions struggling on defense immensely last year, in both the rushing defense and the passing defense, I figured Christian Balmer could be a very good spot, a very good pickup to help both the pass rush and the run defense, and again, was just the best player available at 25. Now, we did not have to wait long for the second pick of the Detroit Lions mock draft, as with the Jacksonville Jaguars trade, the Lions were back on the clock at the 33rd overall pick. Now, there were a couple good players at the 33rd overall pick, and this is kind of where the draft, to me, could have gone a lot of 
different ways. However, when going through the prospects, there was only one player, there was only one person on the board that stood out enough to take at the 33rd overall spot, and that was Tulsa linebacker Zayvon Collins. Now, Zayvon Collins is a guy that a lot of Lions fans like. He's a guy that a lot of Lions fans want us to select, and a guy that if we were to select with the 25th overall pick, Lions fans would be very, very happy with. Now, Zayvon Collins stands at 6'4", 260 pounds, so he is a very good-sized linebacker for the NFL and has the size to transition very well to the NFL. Last year on the season, Zayvon Collins totaled 54 total tackles, 7.5 tackles for loss, 4 sacks, 4 interceptions, 2 touchdowns, 2 passes defended, 2 forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery. Zayvon Collins is a very versatile defender. He can rush the passer. He can cover very well. He's an athletic gift. He's athletically gifted. He forces a lot of turnovers from the linebacker position. And I figured with the third with the 33rd overall pick, with Zayvon Collins still being on the board, with the fact that the Lions have a lot of struggle when it comes to coverage linebackers, our linebackers do not tend to make a lot of plays. They do not cover very well. They do not get interceptions. They do not rush the passer very well. I thought Zayvon Collins was the perfect fit at this spot. He can help the Lions slightly with their pass rush as they can very easily and very often send him on the blitz or send him off the line and he can still get decent pressure for them and he can also drop back into coverage and be very effective from that spot. So from the versatility standpoint and the fact that he just tends to make plays a lot on the field, I thought Zayvon Collins was the best pick for the Detroit Lions at the 33rd selection. Now the Detroit Lions also had the 41st selection which originally belonged to them and was not part of the Jacksonville trade and with that 41st overall selection I have the Detroit Lions once again going to the defensive side of the ball and selecting Jabril Cox the linebacker out of LSU. Now Jabril Cox I talked about him in yesterday's video as a made it round sleeper a guy that could be going on day two and a guy that can be a very versatile defender a guy that's a very athletically gifted player and a guy that's just a very good smart athletic coverage linebacker that is very good at covering. Now I talked about this yesterday but Jabril Cox is an athletically gifted linebacker. He stands at 6'5", 231 pounds last season with the LSU Tigers. He totaled 58 total tackles, 6.5 tackles for loss, 1 sack, 3 interceptions including a pick 6, 5 more passes defended, and a fumble recovery. As I said, Jabril Cox is a smart, athletic good coverage linebacker. And while I don't think he was quite the best player available at 41, he was not going to last until the 72nd pick. So I figured I had to take him at 41 or else he would not be there for me to draft. And I really, really like Jabril Cox as a player. I really think that he's a great coverage linebacker. I think him and Zayvon Collins could bring a lot of very good coverage ability to this linebacking core. And I think the two of them together can single-handedly change the way this linebacking core plays and how this linebacking core looks in Detroit for the next couple of years. So with that being the case, I think it was a little bit of a reach down the board to get Jabril Cox at 41. However, I was not confident that he would be there at pick 72, so that is why I selected him where I did. Now, moving down to the 72nd selection in the NFL draft, I have the Detroit Lions taking their first offensive player as they select wide receiver out of Oklahoma State, Tylen Wallace. Now, Tylen Wallace stands at 6 foot, 190 pounds. Last year, with the Oklahoma State Cowboys. He totaled 59 receptions for 922 yards and six touchdowns. Wallace is a very good wide receiver. He hasn't ran around. A, he's not very diverse in his route running. He wasn't really asked to run a lot of different routes in the route tree at Oklahoma State. So I can't tell you whether or not he can or cannot do so. It's just a matter of, you know, he wasn't asked to run a lot of different routes. He wasn't asked to do a lot of different things in his route combination. So I haven't seen that a lot. And I think that's a big reason as to why he is falling down the board. However, he is a very competitive, very athletically gifted player and is one of his biggest strengths is he is very good at high pointing the football. He's very good, very competitive and wins a lot of 50-50s because he's very good at high pointing the ball. He's very good at getting the ball at the highest point and really good at out jumping and out leveraging defensive backs when he's going up for the football, which is something I really, really like out of Tylen Wallace and reminds me of a guy like Kenny Galladay who might not get the best separation, might not run the best routes, but at the end of the day, 
day he comes down with the football and at that point you just gotta smile and say well what are you gonna do at that point like Tylen Wallace is that kind of receiver where he might not break your ankles on a route he might not run the cleanest the crispest route you've ever seen in the route tree but at the end of the day Tylen Wallace is going to be the guy with the ball in his hands in a 50-50 situation and as of right now prior to free agency the Lions don't have a guy like that on their roster unless they do bring back Kenny Galladay now with the 88th selection in the NFL draft and the Detroit Lions fifth selection in this class I had the Detroit Lions taking Andre Cisco safety out of Syracuse now Andre Cisco stands at six foot 209 pounds in his career he did opt out of the season last year because of the pandemic in order to train for the NFL draft and in order to train for the NFL now in his career at Syracuse Andre Cisco totaled 136 tackles 13 interceptions one pick six 14 passes defended, two forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery. As I said yesterday, this was another guy who was kind of my mid-round, kind of my day two, late day two, early day three sleeper. A guy that I think can be very successful in the NFL. A guy that I think will be very successful in the NFL. And to get a guy with the 88th overall pick with the skill set of Andre Sisco would be a massive steal for the Detroit Lions. And you might say, well, Andre Sisco isn't, you know, what we need in Detroit. He's not the safety we need. We have a high safety in Tracy Walker. Well, I believe that Andre Sisco can replace Deron Harmon. I don't believe the Lions will bring back Deron Harmon. I think they will let him walk as I think they should let him walk. And Andre Sisco is basically Deron Harmon. If Deron Harmon could tackle, if Deron Harmon had better ball skills, if he was faster, more explosive, and a better ball hawk. Like, he, Andre Sisco is literally just a better version of Deron Harmon at everything. So the fact that we're getting an upgrade over our starting safety from a year ago, and we are getting him at the 88th overall selection with a guy that can plug and play immediately a guy that can plug in and play your high safety on day one with the 88th overall pick and the sixth pick of your draft class that is tremendous value and the fact that he fell to the 88th overall spot I think was a big get for the Lions moving on to the 112th selection in the NFL draft now with this pick the Denver Broncos suggested a trade with the Detroit Lions to move up two spots giving up their 114th pick along with their 252nd pick which I decided to accept I figured moving down two spots, getting an extra player, getting an extra pick in the class would be a good thing to do for this rebuilding team. Now, for, now, fast forward two more spots at pick 114, the pick we traded for. Philadelphia then suggested a trade offering the 117th pick along with their 191st pick for the 114th and 252nd. So I accepted that deal. I thought you fall three more spots, but you jump a lot higher from 252 to 190. And I thought that would be a good move for the Detroit Lions, getting a little bit higher talent while still having the same number of picks. Now, with said 117th overall pick, I decided the Detroit Lions will yet again go with a wide receiver from Diamond Brown, wide receiver out of North Carolina. Now, I very likely butchered that name, and I apologize if you are a fan of the North Carolina wide receiver. However, regardless of how his name is spelled, regardless of how his name is pronounced, this dude is a monster at wide receiver. You know, Brown comes into the NFL at six foot one, which is a pretty good size for an NFL wide receiver, and you just can't deny the man's production at North Carolina. Last season with North Carolina, he totaled 55 receptions for 1,099 yards and eight touchdowns. Brown also had back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons with North Carolina. He's a versatile wide receiver. He can play in both the slot or on the boundary and be very successful at it. He does run very good routes. He gets very good separation for a late round, for a late round wide receiver. And I mean, looking at his production, looking at his skill set and looking what the Lions need at wide receiver. They don't really have a great route runner. They don't really have a guy that creates immense separation. Brown can be that guy for the Detroit Lions and getting a guy like that, getting solid depth and solid talent at 117 is all you can ask for with the 117th pick. And I believe Brown will be a fantastic addition to this wide receiver core to pair with Cephas, Allison, and of course, Tylen Wallace. Now, moving on to the 154th pick in the NFL draft and the Detroit Lions last pick that belonged to them prior to the draft. I have the Detroit Lions selecting Jarrett Patterson running back out of Buffalo. Now the Detroit Lions don't necessarily need a running back in this draft. However, I felt with the 154th pick, there was no better value than Jarrett Patterson. Now Patterson is a 5'9 running back weighing it at 195 pounds. 
And in just six games last year for Buffalo, Patterson had 141 carries for 1,072 yards and 19 touchdowns. Let me repeat that. He had 1,072 rushing yards and 19 rushing touchdowns in six games. This man is a workhorse. This dude had 19 touchdowns in back-to-back -back seasons, had I believe almost 1,800 yards his sophomore campaign. He was a bell cow. He was a workhorse for Buffalo in his time at the NCAA level. He's a good explosive back, doesn't necessarily have the fastest acceleration or the highest top speed. However, this dude has a lot of power, has really good footwork, has a decent burst to him, meaning he's not going to go for 70, 80 yards, take it to the house. But if you need two or three yards, you better hand that ball to Jarrett Patterson because he will get you the ball. And I mean, especially if you're in the red zone, I mean, 19 touchdowns in back-to-back -back seasons and 19 touchdowns in six games this past season is nothing to scoff at. I know he played at a small school. I know he might have some rare and tear on his tires having so many carries with Buffalo however he's not going to be the biggest guy he's not going to be the guy carrying every single ball for every single game for the Detroit Lions he's going to be a rotational guy he's going to be a power back guy a guy that we can get involved often but not wear him down and not really make it so that he's going to be injury prone for his entire career I think this is tremendous value at the 154th selection and with the 154th selection I had the Lions taking a running back to complement. KJ and DeAndre Swift. Now with the 191st pick and the final pick in the NFL draft for the Detroit Lions, I have the Lions selecting Paris Ford, the safety out of Pittsburgh. Now Paris Ford stands at six foot even and 190 pounds. Last season at Pitt, he totaled 41 total tackles, three tackles for loss, three interceptions, and one passes defended. Now Pittsburgh's season was cut short because of the coronavirus. And in the last season that and in the last season that Paris Ford played for Pittsburgh, the last full season that he played for Pitt, he totaled 90 tackles on the season, two and a half tackles for loss, three interceptions, one touchdown, nine passes defended, and three forced fumbles. Now, those stats might look really impressive, and they are very impressive stats. However, I think the thing that shows up more than anything about Paris Ford that isn't necessarily on his stat sheet is this dude hits like a train. I mean, if this dude hits you, you will feel a week from the day you got hit like you will feel it for a long time because this dude in Paris Ford hits like a truck I mean he throws his body he is not afraid of contact he is not afraid to tackle you he is not afraid to get his hands dirty this dude hits harder than I think anybody I've seen come out of the draft in a very long time and now he is very inconsistent with his tackling he does tackle very high at times which is why he will go so late in the NFL draft however his potential his athletic ability and just his willingness to hit players in the mouth and bring a toughness and an identity to this team, I think is reason enough to take him with the 191st pick. Now, with all that being said, that is my first mock draft for the Detroit Lions. I had the Detroit Lions taking Christian Baltimore, Zayvon Collins, Jabril Cox, Tylen Wallace, Andre Sisco, however you say his name, Brown, Jarrett Patterson, and Paris Ford, along with receiving a 2022 Jacksonville second round pick. Now, I was a big fan of this draft class when I was making it. Obviously, I might have a little bit of bias, but I think this draft class gets a lot of things right for Detroit. It adds two pass rushers to this team in Barmore and Collins, guys that can really affect the pass rush, guys that can really help this pass rush get going, and guys that can really help put some pressure on opposing quarterbacks, which the Lions have struggled with for so long. It adds two very good coverage linebackers in Zayvon Collins and Jabril Cox. Those two players can single-handedly take over and be one of the better combinations and better coverage linebacker duos in the NFL in their rookie season. You have two very productive wide receivers in Tylen Wallace and Brown. Both of them were 1,000-yard receivers in college, and both of them were very consistent and showed a lot of good things at the NFL or, and showed a lot of good traits that should transition to the NFL level. You have one incredibly productive running back from the college level in Jarrett Patterson, a guy that can take, give you a lot of carries, a lot of production, and be very efficient, especially in the red zone for your team, help you capitalize in the red zone, get touchdowns and not field goals. You can pair that guy and have him be a compliment to Swift and carry on Johnson. And then you also walk away from the draft class with two playmaking safeties, one safety in Andre Sisco that makes a lot of plays deep 
deep down the field, has incredible instincts and has incredible ball skills that will get you a lot of turnovers through the air, and a playmaking safety in Paris Ford that is not afraid to hit, that is not afraid to get his hands dirty, that is not afraid to set a tone. And I believe a guy like that, a guy with that mindset, a guy with that fearless athletic ability, that ability to hit hard, will just bring a different identity to Detroit. And I believe with that draft class, with all of that being said, that is the best possible draft class the Lions could hope to walk away with. Now, with all that being said, that is all I got for you guys today. That is my first try. That is my first mock for the Detroit Lions of this 2021 draft class. Let me know what you guys think about the mock down in the comments below. Let me know what I got right. Let me know what I got wrong. Let me know who you think should go higher. Let me know who you should take at any certain pick. And let me know what other trades you might want to make with other teams. Now, with all that being said, that's all I got for you guys today. Let me know what you think down in the comments below about what you think about this first mock draft. Obviously, this is a very early sketch. This is a very early pencil in of the draft class. We haven't gone through free agency yet. We haven't re-signed players yet. I don't know if Kenny's coming back. I don't know if Romeo's coming back. I don't know, you know, if Jack Fox or Matt Prater or, you know, any of those guys are coming back. I don't know yet. So that's why I wanted to do this mock draft early, kind of get an early sketch of the mock draft and update it as time, as players get signed, as free agents come in and as the team changes. However, with that being the case, that is all I got for you guys today. Again, let me know in the comments below what you think about this mock draft. What did I get right? What did I get wrong? What would you change about the mock draft? But with all that being said, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you all so very much for watching. If there is Lions news before tomorrow, then I will obviously make a video letting every single person know. But until then, that's all I got for you guys right now. Thank you all so very much for watching, and I'll see y'all tomorrow with more Lions content. Bye, guys.